U.S. Senator Bob Menendez's corruption trial appears to be in full political damage control mode, continuing to cast the blame at the feet of his spouse, Nadine Menendez, as witness testimony continues. Detailing today how businessman Will Hanna rescued Nadine's home from foreclosure, just as the high-ranking senator allegedly helped Hanna secure a lucrative business relationship with Egypt, exporting halal meat. That's according to a lawyer who wrapped his testimony today for the bribery trial, saying, he delivered the money provided by Hanna directly to Nadine Menendez's bank, helping her avoid a mortgage foreclosure lawsuit. Senator Menendez moved into that home after the couple married a year later and has pleaded not guilty to a number of charges related to alleged bribes and payments. Ted Goldberg was in the Manhattan courtroom today and joins me from outside with the latest. Ted, good to see you. So uh, I know that there was a witness on the stand this morning. Who did we hear from? And it sure seems like Nadine's name uh, just keeps popping up. Hey, Bree. So earlier this morning, we heard from John Moldovan. He was a lawyer who worked for Will Hanna's company that is at the center of this whole scandal, ISEG Halal. And according to his testimony, Nadine had a bit of a no-show job. She, w she was employed month to month for three months, making $10,000 a month as a consultant. But when asked what kind of work did she produce, uh, Moldovan didn't really have an answer. Not only that, he said that he never saw Nadine appearing at the office. He was not familiar with her work at all and was also not familiar speaking about her work with any of the other employees there. Of course, the defense pointed out, well, you were just there for three months, so maybe she did other stuff or anything along those lines. But Moldovan kind of stood firm and he said, yeah, I was not familiar with work that she had done. Perhaps that $30,000 went a long way towards helping Nadine. Her finances were not in the greatest shape. And as Menendez's team has pointed out, maybe that's the reason why she was, you know, the gifts of cash, the gifts of gold were a big help for her. She was behind on her mortgage more than $20,000. She was in fear of, for of having her house foreclosed upon. And some of the folks that are involved in this, some of the defendants helped her out a long way. According to evidence, there was a $20,000 plus cashier's check that, was it a loan? Was it a gift? It was a little bit mysterious. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, and where was, where was the senator in, in all of this, Ted? How does he factor in, if at all? So this is what's going to play into Senator Menendez's strategy. He did not really appear in this testimony at all. When they asked uh, Moldovan, the lawyer, hey, uh, did you ever speak to Senator Menendez? Did you ever hear Senator Menendez's name from Will Hanna? He answered no both times. He said throughout this whole endeavor, he never spoke with Senator Menendez, and he never even heard the senator's name. So this is really playing into the senator's strategy of laying all the blame at Nadine. It seemed uh, pretty clear from the outset that Judge Sidney Stein, who's overseeing the trial, wants to keep things rolling. So who did we hear from this afternoon? Which witnesses took the stand? Yeah, we went at a relatively breakneck pace with four witnesses today, including the lawyer this morning. And then also there have been two witnesses who work for who are employees at companies owned by two of the defendants. There was also testimony from Joshua Paul, who is who works at the Political and Military Affairs Bureau in D.C. He gave a lot of general information about why the U.S. continues doing arms sales with the country of Egypt and even gives Egypt a lot of money every year to purchase munitions from American companies. He said that someone in Senator Menendez's position as chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee has a lot of influence, a lot of sway into whether or not these arm deals are approved or nixed. So while he did not implicate Senator Menendez at all, he said that someone in that position could wield their influence and stop these deals. Should so be interesting to see what happens with this trial next week. And especially we should, should be interesting to see if the senator's daughter, Alicia, continues making appearances in the courtroom like she has today and yesterday. Let me go back to that point you made, Ted. So they've got to draw the connect, connect the line there between the time that the senator was in his perch on the Foreign Relations Committee and when this contract happened. Have we seen anything so far to indicate the timing um, and how the two may have been at the same time? I don't believe so. I think that's going to be happening next week when there are a lot more witnesses coming through uh, for the governor, for the government and for the defense as well. Yeah, we know that they have a litany uh, there, and I know you've got quite a crowd behind you, of course, the Trump hush money trial going on just across the street. Ted Goldberg for us in Manhattan covering the Menendez trial. Ted, thanks so much.